guys, it's Britt, and welcome back to my channel. I'm so happy you're here. We are kicking off May by doing another book that I think you guys are really going to enjoy. We've been doing this series for a couple months now where I pick one book or cookbook that's whole food plant-based, and I just kind of share four recipes generally out of the cookbook that I think you guys will enjoy to kind of give you a preview and um, just let you know about it. So this month, we're going to do the 30-Day Alzheimer Solution Cookbook. This is a beautiful cookbook. It would look amazing on your coffee table, but also the recipes are pretty incredible. And it's by two doctors that are married, um, Dr. Dean and Aisha Scherzite. And they are some of the smartest people, the whole family that I've ever met. Um, they have so much knowledge in their first book, The Alzheimer's Solution, and they've just made this cookbook to go alongside it. And I've loved everything I've made out of it so far. Another reason why I wanted to make this series is because I want you to get confident in no matter what cookbook you pick up, especially if it's plant-based, um, you can tweak it for whatever plan you're following. So if you're following Dr. Greger, if you're following Dr. McDougall, Dr. Furman, whoever you're following, a combination of all of them, you can make it fit for what your lifestyle goals are. So. This is a really awesome book. I think you guys will really like it. It's linked down in the show notes down below. I don't give exact measurements for this series because you should go pick up the cookbook, but I will put the ingredients on the screen now that I'm gonna use. I also have made this recipe a couple of times and I found a couple of tips and tricks that I like that I think kind of do a little shortcut to the recipe. So um, you can make it exactly how it's written in the book or you can kind of follow along the way I make it. It's delicious. It has such a beautiful combinations with the pomegranates, the spinach, the yellow split peas. I think that this is such an easy recipe. You probably can do this even in the Instant Pot. And again, make it for what your family enjoys. So we're going to get started. It's on page 179 of the cookbook. It's the yellow split pea soup with spinach and pomegranates. It's still a little cold here in Pittsburgh. May is a little finicky with rain and, and cold weather, so this is perfect for us to have tonight for dinner. So we are gonna get started. So I actually cooked the split peas ahead of time. So you just get some vegetable broth, you put your split peas in it, you bring it to a simmer. I added tomatoes as well. So I'm gonna turn my induction top on just to get this started. Do you hear it? It's a little loud. Um, what I'm going to do up next is I'm actually going to leave out a couple things. Um, so in the recipe, it calls for a green chili. It also calls for cilantro. You will not see me use those here because I'm not a huge fan of, of extra heat. Um, there's already some ginger in here and some other spices that is enough for me. And also I hate cilantro. So I'm, I'm one of those people, I wouldn't even say it tastes like soap. I'm just not a fan. And instantly can detect if something has it. So you will never see your recipe of mine having it, um, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, I just leave it out. A couple things too, if you are SOS free, that means salt, oil, and sugar free, like I am, um, you can do a couple really easy swaps. So I'm gonna do this recipe it's slightly different than written in the book. They have you saute the onions with a little bit of olive oil. I don't use oil of any type, so I'm just gonna add my onions into the soup and they will cook and get translucent and it's beautiful, you don't need anything else. You could also saute them in vegetable broth instead of the olive oil. And um, the other thing too is that they say that you can add salt or pepper at the end to taste. You can just leave the salt out. Uh, I don't think, I think that these are beautiful ingredients and the flavors are very, um, not overpowering, but they're very, it's very flavorful. So I don't even need miso or anything like that. I just leave it out completely. And so no matter what SOS free, um, and like I said, if you're following a specific plan, you can always make this work for what you have. It's really easy to kind of omit. I always say omit and forget. <laughs> so those are just some swaps as a heads up. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to add in, I'm going to add in some of the ginger garlic as well. And I'm also going to add in, like I said, I'm not going to saute the onions and I have um, the garlic cut up here. I'm just going to add in to our soup and then that way it just cooks alongside it. So really easy 
little little trick. It also makes you get less, you know, less pans to clean at the end, which is nice. This recipe, like I said, it's gonna take like no time once you have the slip peas cooked. So in goes the onions and garlic. So, so far I just have the cooked split peas, the vegetable broth, the tomatoes, the onions, and garlic. I'm going to give that a nice toss. And I'm just going to let them get translucent and so that the onions are cooked through. Really simple. And if you had an Instant Pot and made this, it would take, you know, it would be really easy. I'm gonna let that just cook for just a couple minutes and then we're gonna pretty much add the rest and it's gonna be done. This is perfect for a night where you know you're busy, you're out running around. I think it has such a beautiful variety of color. Look at all the spinach we're gonna add here at the end. Um, and I just love the pomegranates too with this. I will say it's not really pomegranate season just yet, and so I was looking for pomegranates and couldn't find them in Pittsburgh, but I also found them in the freezer section, so if you're having a hard time finding pomegranates, check out your freezer section. They might have it in there as well. We're going to really just garnish with the pomegranates, so if you can't find them, I think that the soup is going to be delicious without them topped with it, but um, if you can, definitely use them but it's not kind of a deal breaker. Once your onions are translucent, you can go ahead and add the spices. So I have black pepper, turmeric, ginger, uh, garlic masala, I also have cumin, really wonderful spices I'm gonna add in. Like I said, I just omitted that green chili. Give that a nice stir. Smells amazing. Alright, and I also have some apple cider vinegar I'm going to add in. And last up is to add the spinach. So I always like that um, internet, uh, I guess it's a meme or internet picture where they show like the huge amount of spinach that ends up being really small. It's kind of the same whenever you cook spinach down. So we're going to put it in. I've turned off my heat. It'll wilt the spinach down from the soup still being warm. So in goes my spinach. I'm just going to add in probably one third of it at a time until it cooks down a little bit. So I'm just going to take my soup and kind of Slowly incorporate the spinach. And then because the soup is hot, it cooks it. I will show you guys pictures on the screen um, of the finished product, of course, and video of it. So no worries if you can't see it from there. Alright, I'm gonna add in the wrist. After the spinach is cooked, you are ready to eat. I just top it with some pomegranate seeds. Like I said, check your freezer section if you have a hard time finding it. Plus all the hard work would be done for you opening them. I like to put the pomegranate seeds in like a little bowl and let guests just spoon it on top of their soup as much as they want. So really that's personal preference, but it does so nice. Also, if you get frozen pomegranate seeds, it kind of helps cool down the soup a little. It's just like a flavor explosion. Um, I don't even know how to describe this. It's beautiful. So much nice like texture, but also like all of those spices just are such the perfect amount where it's not overpowering. I don't have to like chug a bunch of water with it. it it's perfect. So I think this is the one of the best soups I've ever had, which I've tried a lot of soups, so that's saying something. I think you guys are really going to enjoy it. I think it's interesting and different and filling and warm. I know you guys are going to like this. Plus, it's like so easy to make, right? We literally 
threw in everything into the pot, let it simmer, and add your greens in at the end. Now again, you can make this recipe fit what you have. If you only have kale in your fridge, put kale instead of spinach. You know, there are so many ways, anytime you guys look at recipes, which is what I'm trying to tell you, with this series and any of any of our recipes that we make is that you can make it fit for whatever you'd like. So I hope you guys enjoyed this recipe today. I will post some beautiful pictures on the screen now of the soup. Um, it was the yellow split pea soup with spinach and pomegranates on page 179 from the new cookbook, The 30 Day all Timer Solution. I know you guys are going to really like this. I have a link to the cookbook down below. Make sure you check it out. Um, I will be back, you know, once a week to share something from this. Uh, this weekend I have a recipe of ours coming out, especially for Mother's Day. I'm going to be sharing with you guys my spin on my mom's blueberry buckle cake. So you don't want to miss that. That's coming out Saturday. So make sure you're subscribed. Give this video a thumbs up. Give it a like. And I'll see you guys really soon for the next one. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys later. Bye. And leave us a comment if you got the book. It is so beautiful and so creative. I've been loving it. Bye.